today we are diving in the excited world of Google AI Studio. Hey guys, my name is Sulat and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for coming back and thank you so much for you watching my videos. In today's video, we're going to talk about Google AI Studio. In this video, I'll try to show you everything that you should know about Google AI Studio, how to use it, how to get API key, different use cases, and everything you need to know. I recommend you watch this video till the end because it's really useful. It gives you a lot of possibilities how to utilize Google's AI. If you are ready, then let's get started. First thing first, let's understand what Google AI Studio is. It is a web-based tool provided by Google that lets you interact with Google large language models. It's designed to be user-friendly that allow you to quickly prototype and test AI applications without needing uh, extensive coding knowledge. Think of it as a sandbox where you can experiment with the prompts, uh, fine-tune models, and see your ideas come to life. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the main functionality of Google AI Studio. Like I mentioned earlier, it is a free tool, so all you need is create a Google account and then open aistudio.google.com. Once you log in, you will see this simple interface. Simple, but really powerful. The main functions are located at the left menu. Let's explore them one by one. The first one, create prompt. The create prompt section allows users to design and test prompts for AI models. User can choose between different prompt types, such as chat prompts for building conversational experiences or structured prompts for guiding model output with example requests and replies. Once you land at the prompt page, you will be able to see additional menu at the right-hand side. In this menu, basically we can set up all our settings. You can select different AI models. You can see how many tokens already in use. You can turn on structural output, code execution function, crowding with Google search, and in advanced settings, you will be able to select safety settings. In the safety settings, you can adjust how likely you are to see a response that could be harmful. As you could see, by default, everything is off, but you can change it. Okay, let me demonstrate for you some example. I'm going to show you how to use this uh, create prompt section. The first thing, system instructions. It is an optional thing, but could be useful if you want to define the role and behavior of LLM. It is ensuring consistent and contextuality of responses. For instance, in my system instruction, I could say that your professional math teacher use formal tone in your responses. And the bottom input section, we can write our prompt. For instance, I could ask what is the solution for this simple math expression. And here we go, this is the response. As you could see, the response in structural format, it's a JSON because I turn on the toggle. Let's turn off the toggle and rerun the prompt again and see the response. To do that, you can use this rerun button. And as you could see, now it is in the simple text format and seems the response is correct. There will be some situation where the LLM couldn't find the answer. For instance, if it is a difficult math uh, problem, for this case, we can turn on the toggle code execution, and then LLM could use programming language to execute that function and get the correct response. As you could see in my simple example, it's a Python code that LLM uh, write and then execute. And as you could see, the response is correct. It is a simple example, but I hope it gives you understanding what for we need to use this uh, toggle. There's another thing in the right menu that I want you to know about. It's called grounding with Google search. For instance, let's ask LLM about uh, what is the latest version of iPhone. As you may know, it's my favorite question because it could tell us how up-to-date is the data that LLM trained on. And as you could see, the answer is wrong. And to fix that, we need to turn on the toggle grounding with Google search. Let's run the prompt. And now you can see the answer is correct. Others March 2025, the latest of iPhone is 16 Pro. This is really, really useful function in case if you want to combine your LLM with the latest data that's available on the internet. As I have mentioned earlier, 
In AI Studio, you can choose different models. Google has a bunch of different models that you can test. To test different models, all you need to do, just select the model from the right menu. For instance, I'll select Gemini uh, Flash Image Generation and let's try to generate some image. I'm going to ask AI to generate an image about hurricane and let's see the result. And as you could see, AI have done this job perfectly. Another useful stuff in the AI studio is that you can pass video text images together with your prompt. For instance, I'll pass the link to YouTube video and I will ask AI count how many times I use Gemini word in my video. And let's see if it can do it. And here we go. After about 40 seconds, AI could finish the job. And as you could see, it gives me the answer 24 times. Plus, it has highlighted which timestamp this word will occur. And that is awesome. Basically, you can do so much things inside AI Studio. And all of this is free. The another wonderful part is that you can uh, create structural data. Basically, you could have a script that pull this data, create JSON file, and pass it to another program. So useful and so powerful. And what's also amazing, you can copy the example of the code that the AI Studio provides. As you could see, this is an example of Python code. It's also available for other languages. Another mind-blowing feature in Google AI Studio Stream Real-Time. This feature enabled users to process and analyze data in real-time. It could understand immediately what you show for it, and it will give you an immediate response. I've created a dedicated video about this feature. I recommend you to watch it because it's really, really useful. You can grant access to Gemini to your camera, your screen, your microphone, and it will be able to understand what you show to it, what is on your screen, and what are you talking about. If you want to see it in action, please watch my other video. The next useful section is starter apps. It is really cool that we can use uh, AI Studio. But what if you want to build some application? And starter app section could be really useful. It provides pre-built application templates that serve a foundation block for developing AI-powered solutions. In the list, there are three applications that you can clone from GitHub and kickstart your next project. These templates cover a range of use cases, so it's really good things for a quick start for developers. You can clone the repository just the way you like it and try to experiment with different models. These apps examples uh, will give you a good foundation how you can communicate with Gemini through API. Fine tune a model. Tune a model section offers uh, advanced capabilities for fine tuning AI models to perform specific tasks more efficiently. It is uh, similar to custom GPT from JetGPT. You can upload your dataset, uh, a CV file, or Google Sheets, or any other documents. And then AI model will be using your own data to improve its performance on specific tasks. For instance, it could be uh, data about your company performance or some specific books or any other things. And the best part, after training, you can access this data through API and then you can connect it to other programs. If you want to see any specific example, let me know in the comments below and I will make video about it. And the last section that I would like to highlight in this tutorial is a prompt gallery. In the prompt gallery section, you will see the collection of curated prompt examples. You can find a variety of pre-made prompts that can help you get started with different tasks. Uh, these prompts uh, can be used as a starting point and you can modify them to suit your needs. Also, you can save the prompts that you create or modify and then you can easily access them later from the same prompt gallery and you can reuse them. Basically, by exploring the gallery, you can see best practices and discover new approaches to prompt engineering. And that's it. As you can see, it's really easy to use. A lot of things you can do with it. And you can try it absolutely free. If you like this video, please click like. If you don't like this video, it's okay. Please click like, but share with me your feedback and comments below. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed yet. 
watch my other videos because they are really useful. And I hope to see you in my next videos. Bye.